Here is your Africa True Story. Africa Wide. How famous European artists stole the work of African artists. History records that in 1920, Pablo Picasso said of African art, La art negre conopa, it meant African art never heard of it. It was a bold denial, not only of African influence, but of the very existence of African art. He implicitly denied that Africans had the capacity to create work worthy of the term art. This was very ironic, if not mischievous, for a man who was later found with a collection of African art. Had Picasso admitted he had been influenced by Africa, it would have been enough to call him a great artist and end it at that. Instead, his petty denial of the apparent earned him another title, Culture Vulture. Picasso is said to have been blown away by the magic of African art. Henry Matisse exposed Picasso to an African sculpture he had just purchased and soon after, Picasso was to have a life-changing experience at the Ethnographic Museum of the Tracedor in Paris. As he looked at the African and Oceanic collection at the museum, his art was taking a shift. He later was quoted saying that through that experience, he understood what painting really meant and that he had found his path in African and Oceanic works and yet denied their influence. One of Picasso's most famous paintings, the de Molaise de Avignon, tells the story all too well. Here was a man engulfed with African beauty, but for some reason could not begin to publicly accept it. Maybe he was a victim of circumstance, tied down by the chains of white supremacy so tight that any admission of appreciation for Africa would have been a betrayal of his own race. Maybe he was just a coward, too scared to admit to his contemporaries that Africa had moved not just his intellect but his spirit. It will never be clear why he chose to be deemed a genius when the source of that ingenuity was derided as the home of some apparent savages. In any case, the African influence inherent in his work resurfaced as a hot issue in 2006 in South Africa. At the Picasso and African exhibition, the artist's work was displayed together with 29 African works similar to those in Picasso's collection. It was described as an innovative dialogue between Picasso's work and his African inspiration. However, Sandile Memela, then South Africa's Department of Arts and Culture Head of Communications, would have none of it. Memela said, Today, the truth is on display that Picasso would not have been the renowned creative genius he was if he did not steal and readapt the work of anonymous African artists. It was a brazen truth that shook tables, but Melema was not done. He added, there seemed to be some clandestine agenda that projects Picasso and someone who loved African art so much that he went out of his way to reveal it to the world. But all this is a whitewash. He is but one of the many products of African inspirations and creativity who lacked the courage to admit its influence on his consciousness and creativity. It is believed that four artists, Picasso, Braque, Matisse, and Derain, stole ideas and took inspiration from African artists without ever acknowledging the source of inspiration, but instead passed it as their own. European artists went ahead to claim that African art was of no cultural importance until Picasso and crew elevated it. This implicit racism lies in the misguided belief that for art to be culturally important, white men in Europe 
have to appreciate it. It is a very sad and blinkered Eurocentric understanding of the world. Europeans could have ignored African art and its cultural centrality to Africans would have still been sufficient. African art never needed Picasso, Braque, Matisse, nor Dirain. Instead, these artists needed African art. Up to 90% of Africa's material cultural legacy is outside of the continent. This art is worth billions of dollars that Europeans plundered from their rightful owners, but yet they still claim that African art is of zero significance to them. These artifacts have been auctioned in their museums, making Europeans profits that belonged to Africa. These include art and archives, ceremonial objects, human remains, natural history specimens, and intelligible cultural heritage like sound recordings and photographs. The best case scenario figure for the number of artifacts any national museum archives in Africa is 3,000, and even then, most of them are of little importance or significance when compared to those in European museums. This art is yet to be returned to the rightful place where it is appreciated and culturally important. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share, and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.